Hey guys, welcome back. Now you'll remember last episode, we replotted the quarry, so now we can get all those materials back into the storehouse. We can start mining again and getting all the rich iron and, and copper and tin that we need to start making the more complex machinery that we're going to be adding to the farm. Namely, the potato multi-farm and of course the milk facility, which is going to be pretty complex to make because we need to put buckets to cows and suck the milk out. So that's going to be quite complex, but we're trying to, going to try and automate it as well. So it's going to be pretty cool. All right, so let's jump in. Right, okay, so let's go and double check on the quarry. Make sure it's still up and running and sucking things up and double check on the engines as well. I had to rehook these up with the redstone conduit, but they're all going. It's all full steam ahead. We've got a tank full of oil. And, oh, whoa, we're getting lots and lots of honey now, which is good stuff as well. Right, so let's go over here and see what's going on with the quarry now. Where was it? Where do we put this bad boy? Aha, oh, yeah, there it is. The arm is up and running. Oh, my God, look at the speed of this thing go. I have never seen a quarry go so quick. Look at the way that's churning through the landscape. Oh my god, that's a mean machine. I think on, on Dirt Factory and um, in Sipsco Space Program, it goes at like a tenth of the speed. Oh man, if, if only we could harness this kind of power for the Space Program. But this is the pure power of farming and agriculture. This is seed oil from a complex kind of tree breeding system. Oh man, to think about it actually, we've come a long way since our humble beginnings of going down a mineshaft and digging for ores. We've got seed oil from multi-farms that grow chestnut trees, which we've bred especially to farm seed oil engines or biogas engines. And the power that we make, it's its kind of, it's, it's the product of a long toil, a long, long project. So, oh yeah, all these minerals, at the moment just dirt and sand, but it's all being sucked up into the quarry. So let's go and take a look at this and watch it go through the system. Wait, what? Where's the, where's it going? Oh no, are the pipes not hooked up? This can't be right. But... What? What's going on here? Oh no, it's dug away part of the uh, underground system as well. Okay, I need to I need to, uh, I need to, plug this up. Okay, I've got some cobblestone with me. Um, now let's see, I can't put it inside the frame. So what I'm going to have to do is, if I put cobblestone, let's see. Oh, it's not going to go there. Will it go there? No, it won't go there either. Oh, weird, what's going on? Some weird bugs happening here. Maybe if I can put... I can't put any blocks down. Oh, what's going on? Okay, the game is some kind of weird bug. Okay, well, I'm going to have to try and fix this. Okay, so I'm back in the game and let's see. Okay, yeah, blocks do place now, so it looks like everything's fixed. But unfortunately, I think little Timmy, every time we restart the server and restart the game, the quarry thinks that this area is full of blocks because, well, honestly, right now it is. It's full of water blocks. So little Timmy is working like a little trooper to delete all of the water from the quarry. But the thing is, if you try and do that, Timmy, you're going to be here for days. So we're just going to have to leave him to his own devices and hope and assume that the materials are coming up the pipe when the quarry's fixed. But what we can do is uh, is block up this hole for starters. Okay, let's just get rid of this dirt. Don't know what this is doing here. Weird. Maybe an enderman put it there. And uh, I'll put some stone here. There we go. And some more stone here. And that should block up the quarry. Oh yeah, nice and neat. Again, nothing coming up through the pipe yet, but at the moment, little Timmy is only working on the water. So once he's finished kind of messing around, we'll be able to see blocks of dirt and gravel and sand. And then when it gets deeper, all the good stuff like coal and iron, maybe even diamonds, coming in through the quarry and going into our chests in the storehouse. Right, so what's the mission for today then? The quarry's up and running, everything's going okay. Now, we, I can't really be bothered to fix the sorting facility yet, the uh, the pulverizer and and all that jazz, because, well, to be honest, it's, it's a bit boring, it's a bit drab, and we don't really need it directly. We can make all the little things that we need as and when we need them. So for the time being, we've got the redstone conduits that we need. What we should do is work out where we're going to plonk down our milk facility and our potato farm. Now, there's a bit of area out here around the back of the pumpkin farm that's pretty much big enough for probably both a milk facility and a potato farm. But I don't want to get rid of these trees because they're quite pretty. Um, hmm. Well, the needs of the farm come before the pretty needs of, you know, aesthetics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig up these trees and put down a hole for the potato farm and the foundations for a milk facility. So let's jump in and get to it. Shovel and axe in hand, I set about clearing out this area behind the brewery. Now I'm fast running out of space here on the farm, 
but this area is prime real estate and the perfect size to fit both the potato farm and the milk factory inside. So, once the trees were gone, I could get to the building. I'm just going to put down the foundations for the milk facility first. That way I won't overbuild the potato patch and leave myself high and dry when I try to come around to the next build. I used cobblestone around the edge of the foundations, used the oak logs I just collected from the trees I chopped down to create planks for the flooring and, uh, and held the building up on stilts made out of scaffold. I plonked down a ramp to get up to the facility a way we can coax our cows up into their pens, and then left the foundations as they were. So, one down, and one to go. I had to run back to the other multi-farms to count exactly how big they were, and how much space specifically was needed. Multi-farms of the size I've used are five blocks long, three blocks wide, and four blocks high, so the hole I would need to dig would have to be around uh, four blocks deep. So I dug the shape of the main multi-farm block, and then each block touching the multi-farm had to be expanded out by six blocks, joining the corners diagonally to create an almost circular field exactly the same size as the existing carrot and wheat farms. Wood made the perfect placeholder, so I didn't lose my bearings. It took me a really long time to dig out all of the dirt and the stone, but once it was done, all that was left was to dig a stairway down to the machinery, grab the multi-farm components from the storehouse, and start building the beast. With the block itself in place, all that was left to do was to use a layer of stone brick, just below ground level, that the multi-farm would use then to place dirt on to grow the potatoes. And there you go, I connected up the path outside the brewery, and now you're able to take a stroll over to where our future potato patch will be. Right, so we have here on the right what will become our potato farm. Oh yeah, it's looking the perfect size. It's exactly the same size as our carrot and our wheat farm, so that's going to create for us plenty of potatoes as soon as we get the right circuitry and things inside the multi-farm. And, uh, and we don't have quite the materials yet to work on the milk facility because the quarry's still up and running and still churning away, getting us that iron. And uh, we can go, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's still going at a super fast rate. But yeah, this will become the milk facility. What we'll have to do is we'll have to coax some cows along this path, up the stairs. Oh, I have to change those stairs a bit, I think, so that the cows can get up. We'll coax the cows up the stairs into separate bays, and then each one of those cows will get pumped for milk, which will go into a giant tank and then we can filter off that milk into bottles and buckets and basically turn it into chocolate milk and all the kind of extra things we need to make things like ice cream, chocolate cookies, all that awesome stuff. Right, so let's go and check on the quarry now that it's up and running to make sure that everything's going through the pipes. Okay, oh whoa, oh yeah, definitely working. Oh, is that uranium? Is that uranium I see through there? No, it's not, it's not my uranium, it's um, it's some kind of shards from Thorncraft. Okay, let's take a look at this stuff going up the pipe. Now what we could have done is gotten some if we can get some gold from this quarry which we might do eventually we can get some gold pipes in here to speed up the process but let's go and see how far the, the quarry has dug while we've been building and, uh, and creating our multi-farm wow okay it's already really really deep look I mean look at that that's going to get down to bedrock in about oh about an hour I think yeah, in about an hour, this quarry will already be at bedrock, which is pretty pretty damn quick, actually. So let's go and check on our chests in the storehouse to make sure that our overflow isn't overflowing. Ah, oh, yeah, there she blows. Now, everything that's coming through here is stuff that hasn't gone to the separate chests. Now, what is this white stuff that keeps going around? Is, is, it, is it marble? Oh, it is. Now, we're going to have to filter this out somehow. So where are we going to put marble and sand? Oh, but we've got tin, iron ore. Now, hang on a sec. Tin and iron ore should be going into um, leftover ores and minerals. Oh, we, obviously, yeah, none of the ore at all is being filtered. So what we're going to need to do is get a diamond pipe and configure this so that all the ore goes into the right place. Okay, so that's a few ores to start with. Unfortunately, we haven't got any gold ore or silver ore or things like that to kind of filter with. 
But what we'll do is as soon as we get those into the overflow chests, we can bring those over to the filter pipe and get those hooked up to the system as well. Right, well, sun is setting, so before we start on the aqueous accumulator, I'm going to go and catch a few Zs after this long, hard day of digging a hole, digging a couple of holes, diggy diggy holes, for, um, for our potato farm, and digging up all the land for our milk facility. Okay, it's time for some Zs, I think. Some well-earned rest. Oh, yeah. After a long, hard day on the farm, it's time to put my head down and just rest up. Ah, another glorious day on the farm right now. So the mission now is to get the correct circuit boards for the multi-farm to make it a vegetable farm for my potatoes, but also to get the aqueous accumulator so that we can get some water into the valve. Now I've forgotten what kind of um, what kind of circuit board we need for vegetable uh, vegetable farm. So I'm just going to go and check on our existing farm. Now it is a intricate circuit board. Managed with vegetables. Now you need a special type of um, special type of electrum tube. So I'm gonna have to work out on the wiki probably which electrum tube gives us specifically vegetable farms. Right. Okay. I've cleared some space in my pack, so I should have enough room now. Oh, I'm gonna get rid of this rotten flesh as well. Ugh. Now I should have enough room to start making the aqueous accumulator. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Right. So let's do it now. First, I need a bucket. Here we go. One bucket. Now let's take a look at what we need for the aqueous accumulator. First up, a pneumatic servo. Kablam. Pneumatic servo down. Next up, we need a machine frame. Kablam. Machine frame. Now next up, we need just those parts together with the materials that I've got in my pack. Kablam. Aqueous accumulator. Woohoo! Now it's time to get another bucket so that I can get some water inside this beast. Now you guys know what an aqueous accumulator is. It's a kind of, a, it's, it's a block that when you put it down, it just sucks up water nearby and puts it into whatever it's near. So I think that could be a pipe. It could suck it into a pipe. It could work as a pump. But for the time being, what we're using it for is we're putting it next to a valve on a multi-farm, which means it sucks up water from this pit underneath here and puts it directly into the farm. Right, so where are we going to put this? Let's see. If I plonk this right about there, and if I put down some water... Now, we'll just double-check here. So let's take a look. Yeah, no water at all, completely empty. But with a little bit of water, a bit of magic here. And if we just finish this up to make sure it's an infinite source. Now, hey presto, the aqueous accumulator is filling our farm up with water. Right, so step one, phase one complete. I've got plenty of, um, plenty of fertilizer as well, so don't need to worry about that. What I do need to worry about is putting in a chip to make sure this farm makes vegetables. Okay, let's go and make those chips. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to activate these peat-fired engines just to get this going. So let's just turn these babies on. Kablam, kablam. That should do the job. And now we should be getting enough power to power up this carpenter. Oh yeah, you can see the bar slowly filling up. So sometime later, this will get done. Now while this is filling up, I'm going to go and check up and see which kind of electron tubes we need to make our multi-farm vegetable. Aha, right. So the wiki says iron electron tubes for... A f multi farm that makes vegetables. So how do you make iron electron tubes? I've only got bronze here, so that's not good enough. Iron electron, and this is inside the thermionic fabricator. Iron and redstone. Well, I've got both of those on me, and the thermionic fabricator is right here. So let's do it. Now oh, wait, no, I've run out of redstone. Oh crap! Well, I'll have to go back to the base, back to the storehouse, get some more redstone, and make these tubes. Uh oh, a wisp! Weird, it's an orange wisp. Now, I've seen purple ones, but what were the golden ones? Do they still kill me? Better be careful. Ooh, he didn't do anything, so he might be peaceful. Okay, so what do I need? I need some redstone. Let's get some redstone and get the hell out of here before that wisp comes back for some more action. Okay. Stack of redstone should do me. Let's do it. Now, it's getting dark, so I better get this done before it gets to night, or I'll be creeper food for sure. Okay, so there should be enough power in the thermionic fabricator now. There's glass as well. And all we need now is iron in an upside down T shape. And we'll put the iron there as well for the materials. Because what you do is you put the recipe in, in here and the materials required for the recipe 
in this compartment below and that automatically sucks the materials out of this bottom compartment to make what you're trying to make. So let's see. That's the recipe. This is the redstone. So now if I press this once, oh no, I've got to wait for the power to charge up. Once the red line gets to that kind of wooden, wooden bar, that should activate the glass, smelt the glass into the tank and it should let me make things with the thermionic fabricator. I just got to wait for this bar to fill up. So that's just a case of the waiting game here. Now I'll come out of that and go and check on the carpenter first. Okay, we've got the intricate circuit board. Kablam. Now I can just take the minerals out of here. There we go. Oh, that's where the redstone was. Ah, so I did have some. Right, now let's get back to the thermionic fabricator. That's one of one. One of two. Oh, there we go. Four electron tubes. Great. So I click on that. Kablam. And there we go. I'm pretty much done. I'll just stack these buckets. Get the redstone out of here. And what can I throw away? This zombie meat's junk for one. And also, probably get rid of these saplings too. Right, so now let's go and put these intricate circuit boards into our farm. But also, what I'll need to do is use the redstone conduits I've got left, 23. Let's hope that's enough to hook up my farm to the power grid. But if not, there's a whole bunch of power underneath the, uh, the, the barn that I can cannibalize to just basically put some more energy into my network. Now let's get underground where it's safe, I hope, and make this circuit board. Right, so what you do is you get the soldering iron, you right click on it, you put an... Well wait, I'll put in the iron electron tubes first, you select managed farm, vegetable farm, four, put the intricate circuit board in the top right, and blam! Manage the vegetable farm, sweet. So that, plus the fertilizer, should be everything we need. Okay, so in goes the circuit board. Woohoo! And the fertilizer down here. And ah, oh, we're almost there. All we need to do now is put in some dirt inside one of these to actually make the uh, the carrots on. Uh, or rather the potatoes. Oh, obviously we need the potatoes as well. I haven't got those on me. Oh, I do! Potatoes, right, sweet. So I can put the potatoes right there. And that should be uh, dirt and potatoes. So it's got the seeds and it's got the uh, the resources. Now I need to hook up to the power grid find out where my power's coming from, and drag over some redstone conduit. Right, so I think it's this way towards the uh, the brewery, so I should tap into the power network if I go this way. Oh, and I have, there it is. Sweet now, let's hope 23 cables is enough to get me power to the farm. Okay, one, two, three, ooh, four, Five. Oh, we're running out of cable quite quick. Seven, eight. Oh no, we're going to make this easy. Look at this. Oh, that's perfect planning and perfect positioning. I'm lucky I put the gearbox on the right place on the farm nearest to the power grid. Okay, now that's the hatch on the corner there and that's the gearbox there. Have to bring this over by one and that should hook it up. Okay, now let's go, let's go and have a look and make sure everything's going tickety-boo. Oh, you know what guys? I think it's actually working. I think we're actually planting our very own crop potato field. Let's go and double check. Oh yeah, down goes the dirt. Now I'm going to need a few more stacks of dirt. So I'll just go and grab those. Righto, three stacks of dirt should see me safe. So now let's just get down beneath the farm, put these into the hatch. And hey presto, we're going to have our very first potato farm. Oh yeah, it's already planted one potato, two potato. Oh, oh it's planting all the potatoes now. Okay, so down goes the dirt. Got plenty of fertilizer, but we'll have to make some more with the appetite that we got. Luckily, fertilizer is super cheap to make, so it shouldn't be a problem. But, oh, yeah, already. Oh, great. We're actually getting our first potatoes planted. Oh, yeah. So this has been it, guys. This is it. This is fantastic. So I've been Stin, and this has been Feed the World. This episode, we got our potato multi-farm into position. Now, you see behind me the, uh, the foundations for what will become our milk facility, which is where we're going to automatically milk cows for their white magic. So stay tuned for that. Next episode, we'll jump into the milk facility. So I've been Stin, and this has been Feed the World. Hit like and favorite and subscribe, and I'll see you guys for the next episode coming soon. Take care.